Hello, it's Philip Taylor speaking from Richmond Green Chambers in London. Today I'm reviewing a book which has come to us from Globe Law and Business. Uh, it's a particularly important book, I think, because it's looking at the future, uh, which is catching up with us quite fast. We haven't had many books in this area of law. It's called Outer Space Law and it's got a subtitle Legal Policy and Practice. And I think it's an important statement about where we are at the moment, because we're on the threshold of some very big changes, I think, in the next few years, as rocketry science improves and we start exploring the nearer part of the universe in a lot more depth than we have so far done. Now, as I say, this is a policy and practice statement, if you like, legally. It's been written by two consulting editors who have brought together a whole range of contributors. Um, the two people are Yanel Abel uh, Felat and Anel Ferrier uh, Snyman, and I hope I pronounced the names correctly. Elizabeth and I discussed this book in some detail. She was the lead writer on it, and we've given the title for our book review has been watching the television a lot recently. Uh, lawyers lost in space. The possibility is no longer remote. Now I'm not referring to the TV program necessarily, but what I am talking about is we've got to start thinking, I think now, about all the things that are going to start involving us as we begin in that next step of uh, going into what is called outer space, in other words, up into the atmosphere and then into the uh, universe as a whole and seeing what is there and what safeguards we have. Let's have a look at the book first. It's a hardback, very much the standard um, structure of uh, globe law and business. There's the front, you see on the side the thing, and then there are the details of the, the people who have um, put, put this together. Then on the back you've got uh, quite a lot of detail, you can probably see it. It's, in, it's, it's reversed out, so it's not the easiest thing to, to read, but there's quite a lot of information there. Now, opening the book at the back, you've got an index, which is very helpful. There's the index at the back there, and that's by page numbering. Um, there's quite a lot in the index, actually. You can see it uh, starts there. Please note that references to notes will be followed by the letter N, and note number. So that gives you some idea of how to use it. Then you've got the biographical details of the contributors, which is again the way they do it with this particular uh, firm of publishers. They put the, the author's details at the back of the book rather than at the front. And then you've got the various um, articles. You can see paragraph numbering and footnoting. So that's fairly prevalent throughout the book. Now in the front, you can see again you've got the front cover there and then after that we have got a blurb about the book there and then you've got the table of contents. You can see how it's structured. We've got um, a preface and a forward and then the various uh, essays if you like, chapter headings covering international law, uh, national laws, the European law, delimiting delimitations on outer space and earth orbits, Property and ownership, an important thing in outer space. Military activities, licensing, insuring, regulation, that's both of artificial satellites and remote sensing activities, and space tourism. Then you go over the page, you see another page there, you've got the exploitation of natural resources, that's in outer space. Again, it doesn't, uh, does not mention specific bodies such as the moon or, um, for instance, asteroids, but... That's obviously the logic of it. Um, international trade aspects, property, IP, intellectual property law, cyber operations, evidence from space in cases before international courts, dispute resolution right at the end. Then we have a preface, which is very interesting. Um, and then actually, the, the interesting point of it, many of you won't know this man, Konstantin uh, Siliofsky. He um, was... Um, um, let me just see. He's got a quote here. The earth is the cradle of humanity, but mankind cannot stay in the cradle forever. Now, he's described as the Russian father of rocketry. He was, if you like, the Werner von Braun in the 1920s. So you get some idea, again, Russian. So, again, very famous person. I think a crater on the moon is named after him. Now, there's the preface there. And then we go from that into a forward. 
The Forge written by uh, Steve Bennett, who's CEO of Star Chaser Industries Limited. It does sound a little Star Warish. I have to say some of this, but I think it's a very important book. Then we get into it. By the way, I will say one thing, and that is uh, Globe Law and Business do not publish um, you know, l less serious books. This is a very serious book, and it's about time this subject matter was looked at in, in some semblance of, of seriousness from the leading players, because there are now quite a large number of com uh, countries that do have a space program of some sort. Obviously, it's very has been very, very expensive. But I think we're in a new era very quickly, especially with private enterprise becoming involved. People like Richard Branson and Elon Musk. So you can see there are big changes at the end of 2017, which we are uh, looking at. Now, this is what we say about the book. As usual, the law does tend to lag behind the dizzying pace of technological change. And as this new title from Globe Law and Business implies, it's about time for the law to catch up. And in this case, with the continually emerging developments, <clears throat> and they're quite quick actually, in outer space activities in which private uh, entrepreneurs, as well as nation states, are becoming involved. And as I say, the, the decision, the change took place under President Obama, as far as America was concerned, when he scrapped a lot of projects and the shift was from the national state, in other words, the United States of America, into private industry. And that's really where the change has taken place. And the scramble is now on, I think. The scramble for out, um, outer space is now on and just beginning. Now, <clears throat> if one forgets about the law just for a nanosecond, scarcely possible, but uh, please bear with us. Um, the contemplation of the future of mankind in, or humankind in space stirs the blood either with excitement or dread. And I have to say, I've, I've, I'm one in the very much the excitement camp. I just think this is a wonderful opportunity. There will obviously be a lot of, of safeguards and a lot of things. It's a very dangerous area to be involved in, but what a great opportunity. It depends on your point of view, though. Now, there will be great adventures and great discoveries out there to be made, but these will inevitably generate serious complications, many of them legal as well as technical. And that's really where we come in, because we've started looking at some of the books that are coming on the market now, like the ownership of satellites and so forth. And this is particularly a wider subject about outer space law. So think, for example, of legal issues concerning property, insurance and liability, all stemming, of course, from the law of contract, effectively. Obviously, you've got issues concerning tortious liability as well, but we'll leave that to one side and, and criminality. Now, this book points to serious, um, certain key problem areas. The introductory chapter, for example, refers to the current situation whereby the legal and regulatory framework for outer space activities begins at the international level, whether state or private entities are involved and that private participants must be cognizant of this regime, as it's, as it's called, which is interesting. In other words, there won't be the same free-for-all that you might have had, for instance, with the scramble for Africa in the 1870s. If I, if I, if I can give it in any form of analogy, I'm not going back to Columbus this time, but you can see all of the changes that are going to take place. So this book's editors, however, make the point that current outer space treaties are, to a large degree, outdated and unable to deal with legal issues arising from military and commercial use of outer space. Absolutely, completely out of date, nothing's being done about it, so you could well find yourself in a fairly substantial free-for-all within the free markets of the West and and countries like China, who are developing at a very fast rate uh, their space program for certainly the moon and, and outwards. Now, as a com um, compilation of the research carried out by its over 20 international contributors, outer space law addresses many such problems, issues and eventualities that we think will crop up. The expertise, therefore, contained in this book is impressive because it comes not exclusively from lawyers and from academics, but also from other people, insurers, economists and, f and financiers as well. And yes, of course, space, space venturers, if we can call them that. And to say that this book delivers a, 
a varied mix of insights and experience is no doubt an understatement. And I think it's well, well worthwhile and not a minute too soon that it's arrived. Now, <clears throat> what isn't an understatement, as pointed out by the editors, is that, quote, the space industry contrib contributes to national D GDP and serves as a catalyst for techno uh, technological advancement, productivity and growth. And therefore, there is a there is a buck to be made out of it, if I can put it in that crudest form. In other words, you can make money out of this. And to add to that, private actors, they love that word, private actors elbowing their way into the space industry have created a situation in which legal issues such as intellectual property rights in space, for instance, have begun to emerge. Non-state entities, the authors say, are becoming uh, involved in pioneering endeavours aimed at making space travel a commonplace rather than a rarity. Now that's again, depending on your point of view, um, something that will or won't happen. There are a lot of people who say it's all it's all complete fiction this and it's all we didn't go to the moon, we didn't do this, we didn't do that. And there are a lot of people who are very very sceptical that we can do anything. But frankly, even though it's 50 years almost since we uh, we're at the moon, we are talking now of uh, a very different era as the new technologies come in which will assist us to use and work in outer space. Now writing in the forward, the CEO of Star Chaser Industries, who I, met, I mentioned before, is quite clear that space tourism, which is only one facet of space activity, is quote, set to become very lucrative indeed. Now that, to my mind, is certainly a point worth, worth bearing in mind. Who would have thought, for instance, and I'm going off the, the review here a bit, but who would have thought years and years ago that you would have package holiday tours through the aircraft flying over above me here in near Heathrow uh, and taking people to sunny uh, destinations for their holidays on a regular basis when people thought space uh, sport f uh, thought that flight itself was such a dangerous activity so you can see how things change let me conclude by saying this because i'm enthusiastic as you know about outer space law and what we might be doing in the future lawyers especially the younger forward-looking contingent reaching for those elusive stars should have a read of this book in our view because it's authoritative as well as speculative and it does deliver more than a few hopeful glimpses of all those economic benefits which could eventually materialise via the space industry. Now as I've said before it's a gamble so is the scramble for Africa and so are a lot of other things including Columbus's activities so you can see that there's a lot to play for here and this book is a very interesting statement and it's well worth reading it's not difficult to read at all but it's well worth reading and for anybody with you know, a little bit of a dream about what we might be doing this might be the concrete reality of what we're facing and it may well be the job that you end up doing in a few years time you never know the publication date is cited at the 31st of october uh, 2017 and I'm recording it uh, in, in the autumn of 2017. So I'd like to thank all the people involved in this production of Outer Space Law. Let's have a quick look at it again. There's the front. Just going in the middle. Uh, this is um, an article on regulation of remote sensing activities. Now, that gets very complicated but you've then got things like the exploitation of natural resources in outer space. That one is of interest to many, many people, including diamond and gold hunters. International trade aspects of outer space activities. So you see again, there are a lot. And then IP law, for instance. So there's a great deal of thought that can be put into this. A big thank you anyway to the authors, all the people involved in producing this work, and of course to... Uh, Sean O'Neill and uh, all the staff at Globe Law and Business for having the uh, courage to produce this excellent new work. Thank you very much indeed to all. Do have a look at our review on the web and in the journals. Bye bye for now.